Last time we got started with logging in to the app using Firebase. So we, we could just type in an email, type in a password, and it would say in the log that we were actually authenticated. Now I want to work on registering a new user. So when we click on this button right here, we go to the register screen, and we can actually register a new user. So we'll start by going into our register activity. And I forgot to initialize the username, so that's the first thing I'm going to do here. So this will username equals edit text, find view by ID, or the ID dot input should be input username and this is actually m username and I also don't have the register button here so and I guess it'll be button register button find you by ID or that ID dot button register then we're gonna go up to the top and create a new method for signing in actually I'm just gonna call it init because it's just going to initialize the button basically so private void init and what init will do is just initialize the button for registering so button register dot set on click listener new on click listener and then email equals m email get text to string and username equals m username get text to string and password equals password get text to string okay so then we want to check those inputs just to make sure they're not null so we can just go I believe we have a check we have an oh we have an is string null method here so I make a check inputs okay I can make a check inputs method also so a private boolean check inputs and string email string username string password and basically what this is just going to do it's just going to uh, run the is string null method on each one of our parameters so we're going to log it checking inputs for null values and we can go if email nope email dot equals if it I guess if it doesn't equal I will check if it's null. If it is null or username dot equals null or password dot equal whoops dot equals null. And then we can write a text or a toast make text context and all fields must be filled out so there we go and if they are actually all filled out then we can just return true actually we don't need that we can just return true and then up here we can return false okay so here we can do check inputs and email username password so then we want to set our progress bar to visible so set progress bar set visibility view dot visible and we have what else we have that loading please wait text so set visibility view dot visible and then here now we need to create another method for actually signing in with firebase and th that's what's going to be so if we go to the tool here we go to the firebase helper tool and go to authentication that's going to be this this sign in method down here. So we have sign up new users. That's what we're going to this is what we're going to use. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class, a new utility class because we're going to have so many Firebase methods and I'm just going to call it Firebase methods just to kind of compartmentalize all the Firebase methods into one place. So we're going to get our log first of all. And we can copy a whole bunch of Firebase setup stuff. So there's not a lot in there. They probably got more in login activity. No, there's not a lot there either. All right, well, I guess I'll just grab these. Close login activity and go back here. And we're gonna need more stuff. Um, not sure if we need it yet. We're not doing any database stuff yet. Yeah, so that, you know what, this is actually fine for now. We can come back later when we need more. And we're gonna create our default constructor, so Firebase methods. And it's just gonna take the context and just initialize the context so we need a global variable here private context and context and context equals context and the auth listener or the auth and the auth listener so firebase auth get instance and I actually want to create a global variable for the user ID so private string user ID and then down in here we can go if uh, auth get current user does not equal null then we want to assign that current user so user id equals 
auth dot get current user. Uh, yeah, I just get current user. That's fine. It doesn't like that. Okay, get the user ID. Now we're going to create the method for registering the new email. So we'll go public void register new email, and it'll be take a, a string for the email, a string for the password, and a string for the username. So register a new email and password to Firebase Authentication. Cool. So actually let's. So this is where I would copy that method from the tool. So go to the tools, Firebase, uh, go to authentication, and we can scroll down and you can grab this sign up new users method here. So I'm just literally going to copy this whole thing and stick it right there. And then we can close the assistant and import everything that we need. There's going to be a bunch of stuff. Uh, this obviously needs to change to context. And this up here needs to get also changed to the context. So we've got to change those two. Uh, that is still angry. Oh, it's be uh, so because we're in kind of a separate Java class, we're not actually in an activity itself. It's not going to let me put the context here. So what we can do is we can actually just get rid of this context and we can reference the context down here. And that should get rid of the problem. So you can see that it, it doesn't like that though. If I put the context here or even that context, that is not, because we made a separate class for the Firebase methods, it's not going to like that. So take that away and the context down here should be fine. So if the task is not successful, it's going to display that message saying that authentication failed. And we can go else if, uh, I guess, task dot is successful, then we want to display something telling the user that it was successful. And we also want to get the user ID. So user ID equals auth. Uh, get current user get UID. We're not going to be using this quite yet, but it's going to be used later on when we actually Because we're, we're gonna have to do a lot of checks when we authenticate when we register the user We want it to send a verification email for one thing But before we even do that we want to check to see if that user already exists We need to check to make sure that the username already doesn't already exist because we don't want overlap with the usernames The usernames are going to be unique just like Instagram you can't copy someone's username because otherwise when you're going to search you would get a bunch of people coming up with the same username so there's going to be a whole bunch of checks that we're going to need to do in this video we're not going to have time for it but we're going to start doing that stuff in the next video and the one after that so let's just log that we actually did get signed in so we can go auth state changed and we can go to just print out the user id and that's all I want to write here. So like I said, we're going to do a, we got to do a bunch of checks later on to make sure the username doesn't exist. I want to verify an email and we need to make sure the email also doesn't exist. Or actually this will check the email. But um, just for now, I want to just register a user and make sure that that is just working. So we're going to go back into register activity here. And now we want to go up into our sign in method. Uh, top here, wherever it is here. And now we're going to use those fire, that Firebase methods method, the register new email, and register a new email. So I'll create that Firebase methods uh, object up here. So private Firebase methods, Firebase methods, and go down into on create here. Firebase methods equals new Firebase methods, and we just need to pass the context. And the context wasn't assigned, so that's not going to work context equals uh, register activity dot this yeah, that should be fine now and then we go firebase methods dot register new email and we want to pass the email and password and username and then of course call init up here and that should be good so like I said I want to make sure that I'm very clear on that there's going to be a lot of stuff we still need to do but this is just kind of going to kind of register a user we're going to assume that um, it's going to be a new user and it should work okay so i have the app running on visor here and let's go to that or here i'll bring up my firebase console oh, that's the wrong one bring up my firebase console here go to authentication we can see that we already have a user mitch at tavian.ca who's in there so we'll uh, we'll first try to register a new user under that email and we'll sh and i'll show you that Firebase will not let me do that. So we'll go down to the link here and 
Mitch at Tavian.ca. There's Tavian, password. And so here we expect Firebase to deny me. So it says failed to authenticate. And if I look at the Android monitor here, uh, what do we got here? It says, yeah, so create user with email on complete false because that email already does exist. So I don't have anything handling this this progress bar and actually trying to get, we need because we need to get rid of this if authentication fails. So we're gonna work on that later. Uh, now let's try to, we're just gonna go back to login screen and I'm gonna try and actually register a new email. So I'll go Mitch Tavian at live.com and Mitch Tavian and my password will be password. And let's try that again. And you can see down here, it doesn't, because we don't have any logic written to take us to another activity or anything, it's just staying on this screen. But if we look down here, we can see that oncomplete is true and the user is signed in and the auth state is now changed. So it's definitely different than what we had when we tried to sign in with, with an email that already existed. So that's gonna be it for this video. In the next one, we're gonna start writing some of those checks that I talked about. We're gonna to need to check if the username already exists and we need to also insert data into the database to store the username and any other profile settings for Instagram. Because right now, if we look at our, whoops, if we look at our, yeah, if we look at our database, there's no way for this to store the username. So we're actually gonna to have to insert some data into the database in the next one. So I'll see you guys in that next video.